Whether it be that he destroyed them with a violent wind, or whether it be that he destroyed them, Ikhwan, with a sound, a violent sound that started faint and became more, more uh, severe, or that he destroyed the people like, like the people of Lut, yani the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, that he raised or he yani split the area that they were living in from the earth, raised it to the heavens, to the extent, Ikhwan, that uh, the angels... Yani they were able to see into their dwellings when that uh, was raised into the heavens that was turned upside down and sent back down. Or that Allah Azza wa Jal drowned a, an, in a group of them. Or that uh, as, as occurred uh, at the time uh, with Fir'aun and likewise with Nuh alayhi salatu Or that Allah Azza wa Jal punished a, a, a number of other nations in different ways. And that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions is the punishment for the one who neglect and stay away from and reject Tawheed. Or he mentions that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran, when you open it, you, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that which is related to how he rewarded the people, how he blessed the people, how he established them in the earth, how he made them firm, how he blessed them with barakat from the sama'i wal ard, how he gave them risk and how he gave them victory over their enemies. And how even though they were small in number, Allah Azza wa Jal caused them to be victorious over those who were larger in number. كَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلَةٍ غَلَبَتْ فِئَةٍ كَثِيرَةً بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ As Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned, how many a small group of individuals have overcome a large group by the will of Allah. And that, ikhwan, is the reward for Ahl tawheed For those who establish Tawheed and remain upon that. Or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, His awamir, and his nawahi, the commands and the prohibitions that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that which is rela related to the acts of ibadah that he has legislated from salah and zakah and hajj and umrah and that which is related ikhwan to siyam and other than that ikhwan from the acts of ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated upon the ibad and upon the servants of Allah and that is nothing other as Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned than the huquq or then the rights of Tawheed. That from the rights of Tawheed is that we follow the Messenger of Allah and that following of the Messenger of Allah necessitates carrying out his awamir, carrying out his commands, and prior to that, no doubt, carrying out, or alongside that, carrying out the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that Allah Azza wa Jal commands us within the Quran. And they are the rights of Tawheed, as Ibn al-Qayyim mentions. So, Ikhwan, you mention a surah. And reflect upon that categorization of Ibn al-Qayyim. Regardless of the surah, whether it is from the smallest of the surahs, or the smallest of the suwar, surah al-Ikhlas, surah al-Kawthar, or from the langa of the suwar, reflect upon those suwar and those ayat, and there is not a surah except ikhwan, that in it and in its ayat are that which return back to those three categories of tawheed. And thus ikhwan, the affair of tawheed, ikhwan, it is ajib. That we have individuals saying, Ya Khi, subhanallah, tawheed, tawheed, tawheed. When are we going to move on to other things? You know, much bigger things that are taking place in the ummah. When are we going to move on? And no doubt, ikhwan, uh, this uh, affair of tawheed, and this statement is one that is based upon jahl. For indeed, ikhwan, the whole of tawheed is the deen of Allah, Azza wa Jal. And if we're going to move on, then what do we move on to? Tawheed, ikhwan, from the time that we're born until the time that we pass away, inshaAllah. And so, Ikhwan, it is by way of establishing that Tawheed. Since we've established that the Qur'an, all of it from its beginning to its end, is Tawheed. And that Allah Azza wa Jalla has mentioned in the Qur'an, in هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَبِيرًا That Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned that indeed this Qur'an, it guides to that which is better. It guides to the best of affairs. And it gives glad tidings to the mu'mineen, those who carry out righteous deeds, that they will have a great reward. When that is the case with the Qur'an, then no doubt, ikhwan, that great re reward uh, is established on the basis of them actualizing tawheed. And so, ikhwan, it is by way of that tawheed, carrying it out, that Ibn Adam will return back to his origin to his place of abode. And that is 
the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us from its people. When that is the case, Ikhwan, there is a nice piece of uh, kalam and some statement from Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah that we wanted to mention, Ikhwan, and we wanted to start uh, with that, uh, but no doubt the uh, introduction around the topic of Tawheed uh, was and is elementary. Ibn al-Qayyim, Ikhwan, in the beginnings of his uh, يعني, tremendous book, Miftahu Dar al-Sa'ada, he makes mention of the fact, Ikhwan, and of something that sometimes we don't reflect upon and, and think about and remember. And that is the fact, Ikhwan, that Adam, our father, in his origin, Ikhwan, he was created and he was placed in Jannah. And though there is some difference of opinion amongst Ahlul Ilm and among many of the scholars, whether he was in the Jannah itself or whether he was in a Jannah, not Jannah itself, but a Jannah, the scholars, some of them differ. Uh, Ibn al Qayyim, Ikhwan, after discussing that, he concludes that he was created in Jannah. And the fact that he was created in Jannah does not necess necessitate that he has seen all of Jannah because some of those. Uh, who dispute whether or not he was actually in Jannah, they mention that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Hadith Qudsi, أَعْدَدْتُ لِعِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحِينَ مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطْرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ That I have uh, prepared for my righteous servants, that which no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and it has not occurred to the heart of any individual. So they say he couldn't have been in Jannah because Allah Azza wa mentions this concerning Jannah that I have prepared in Jannah that which no ear has heard, no eye has seen, and that which has not occurred to the heart of anyone. And the fact that there are, that, yani, that, even, that Adam was created in Jannah does not necessitate that he saw all of Jannah. And so the hadith still stands true uh, and uh, yani, we do not say that Adam والسلام, saw the whole of Jannah. Point is, Ikhwan ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions that which is related uh, to uh, 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 Adam being created in Jannah. And the fact, Ikhwan, that us being from his offsprings, that us being from his offsprings, that the intent and the goal is to return back to our place of origin. And that the dunya is nothing but a, a dar of ikhtibar and tamheez and imtihan. It's a place of يعني, test and trial uh, and a place ikhwan, where we are tried during our life in the dunya. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the one who created death and life to test which of you are best indeed. And then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ikhwan, after creating Adam, placed him upon the earth on the basis of that which occurred from the sin of Adam that Allah azza wa forgave him for. And then ikhwan ibn Adam continued to procreate uh, and uh, generation after generation have continued to exist in this dunya uh, uh, until ikhwan, we have our state uh, and the world as we know it today. But Ibn al-Qayyim, he makes mention of a statement, rahimahullah, and it is something that is important for us to reflect upon and has a great relation to this affair of Tawheed being the key to Jannah. For Ikhwan, it is the key to our place of return. For indeed, there is not one of us except that his goal should be to return to Jannah. Listen, Ikhwan, to the kalam and to the statement of Ibn al-Qayyim. He mentions rahimahullah ta'ala in the beginnings of Miftahu Dar al-Sa'ada amma ba'd. Fa inna Allah subhanahu lamma ahbata Adam aba al-bashar min al-janna lima lahu fi dhalika min al-hikam al-lati ta'jiz al-uqul al-ma'rifatiha wal-alsun an-sifatiha fa kana ihbatuhu minha aynu kamalihi liya'uda ilayha ala ahsani ahwali فأراد سبحانه أن يذيقه وولده من نصب الدنيا وغمومها وهمومها وأوصابها ما يعذب به عنده مقدار دخولهم إليها في الدار الآخرة 